I, I, I don't want to mess my hair. <laughs> you better have one of these things here because I ain't messing my hair. I'm telling you that now. I'm telling you that right now. God damn you. Fuck shit, damn hot sucker. Jesus Christ. No. I need some aspirin. I really do need an aspirin. <laughs> yeah. I'm forgetting a fucking etiquette yeah, screaming like this. That's all you get for that one. Yeah, you need a tape. It's all good. If my cards were titties, I'd fuck the hell out of them. <laughs> oh, man. Uncle Tony? Are you fucking kidding me? Pulling a stunt like that on this street? It was just sitting there. What do you care? Fucking street punks. Snatching purses from old ladies. Christ, a pussy was here to see this shit. Well, he ain't here. I got news for you, Joey. There's more than one way to shame your family. Whatever else he was, pussy was a good father, and he would have hated seeing you like this. <laughs> He'd be as pissed as me. I'm sorry, Tony. Go home. Quit acting like a fucking delinquent, and maybe we can find something for you to do. No kidding? You do that? I go out the back way. Now. Leave the fucking purse, you moron. Go! <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Never wear a dead man's watch, especially if you whack the guy. Uh, be uh, be loyal. Be uh, be um, don't be a rat. That's number one. That's something like my. I'm very proud of my character. He wasn't a rat. He saw cock, but he wasn't a rat. <laughs> Take a look inside Road to Respect, the new Sopranos game. Welcome to the family. We were meeting with somebody from THQ who said that they were looking for a developer to make a game based on the Sopranos property. Personally, I've been a huge fan of the show ever since it came out. And when I heard that, my jaw dropped and I said, okay, we would definitely want to do it. Our story uh, takes place between seasons five and six, and the script is uh, just over 600 pages. Obviously, we have to be careful about who lives and who dies. You're gonna lie to me now. There is uh, literally hundreds uh, of lines um, in, a, in a game like this that all has to get um, poured over. Joey, how much more do I have to listen to? Sorry, Silk. The world that David Chase has set up in Sopranos has created a, a really complex world for us to play in as a game player. Making sure we hit the tone of the show, making sure we get the voices correct, and making sure we don't have uh, the characters from the show doing things that they wouldn't do. And it's a bit of a t challenge in terms of marrying one of the best dramas ever created with uh, a video game where you're essentially doing a lot of fighting. You take care of that thing? All the main cast members are involved, uh, James Gandolfini. You know, the hardest part of being boss is this, killing people. Silvio, Polly, Christopher. Tony's gonna love hearing about this. To have the real Sopranos experience, you have to have the real actors. Video game players want the real thing, and we had to have involvement from the cast. Being able to get the original cast really brings us authenticity and it, it feels like a Sopranos experience because of that. I was thrilled that they asked me to be in it. Is he still breathing? They keep it up. That's pretty wild. I mean, I always wanted to get a character on The Simpsons and always wind up in a crossword. Like, you know, four letters, gay mobster, Vito. God punishes me for being pretty. <laughs> Tony Sirico coming to life as a video game. That's very exciting to me. Don't just stand there. This ain't happy, Howard. Take over. My manicure's fucking wrong. You know, seeing the virtual Tony Sirico with his hands together and he's pointing the fingers, and I think it's I think it's hilarious. There's nobody like Tony Sirico, and to see him represented in a game is, to me, priceless. You better have one of these things here, because I ain't messing my head. Well, this this game's going down in history. I can keep beating you up all night. Dealing with Bolly and Vito and Christopher and Silvio and Tony. They're going to feel like they're part of the crew. You'll see a lot of Pauly using his fingers. If you pull that shit again, this way, this way, this way, up yours. A lot of Pauly choking, beating up, a lot of blood. And Pauly's very funny. He's very funny. Look, he's a fucking comedian. I'm about to punch you in the mouth. 
We want you to be able to walk through the Bing and go in and hear Tony and Polly talking and then they look up and see you and tell you to get the hell out and then you do something and come back and hey, they're still talking. The amount of like spoken lines, it is between 10 and 12,000 lines, which is unprecedented. I mean, for voice actors, we have, you know, aside from the crew, we have you know, dozens of other actors that did hundreds of parts. We've gone out of our way to really create moments where you're both interacting with these guys and just watching them, you know, fly in the wall. Calm down, AJ, just tell me, are you all right? I was happy with the dialogue and, and the writing because they didn't really shy away from it. It's, you know, it's, it's like it was real, it was raw. AJ got contact, motherfucker! The sons of bitches tried to run him down with his own car, with my car! Who? What the fuck do you think? Twins! Italian looking! Who oh, shed his twins? Just being able to, you know, play the mob boss's son is also fun, and, you know, it's fun to get into trouble, and I think it kind of get you out of it. Put the drugs, now this! Right, it's time to push back to start with Angie Porn Studio, the place Sal runs. It's uh, staying in our community. It was fun uh, doing the voice. Uh, those one-liners, they went quick. Um, I edited a few that they liked. Whatever, you fucking mook. Hey, you're a fucking badass. There's nothing funny about blowing a guy. Go ahead. <laughs> I just put a request in to make me slimmer. <laughs> Cheeseburger and a vanilla shake. If it's chocolate, you're fucking taking it back. Got it? Well, this is a big challenge, actually, to do. You're not acting with another character. You have to really take everything from the inside and just kind of be spontaneous and get a feel for it and go with it. What's your bra size, pretty boy? It's always such an honor to get to work with these people. Maybe I should call my dad. Even though it's it's doing different stuff than people see me do on the show, I mean, you could totally, you know, it's still AJ and he's still the same rotten kid. Oh, this is bullshit. Fuck! Well, everybody's just playing the normal role, and my role is the consigliere to the family. You guys need to start trusting me. And the last thing I played was, you know, Pac-Man or whatever. <laughs> you know? Here's your chance. Deal with this prick. I think truly working in the world of Sopranos, we wanted to create a new character so that we could be respectful to the way that the show has dealt with all the main cast and really gives the player a chance to experience the world and come into it fresh. We wanted to give the player an opportunity to kind of create their own experience and personality in the game. And if they were playing one of the original cast members, it would kind of already be predefined. You come into the game as Joey LaRocca, who's a low-level person in the Sopranos organization, and you're trying to become a made man. It's his evolution of a character. It's how this, this small person makes it big. It's, it's no one who eventually becomes made through his experiences with the Sopranos crew. I'm playing Joey LaRocca. I'm an enforcer, basically doing whatever they tell me to do. And I have to earn the respect of all the other characters because I have so much to prove being the bastard son of Big Pussy, the rat. Your old man was a rat, that's what I know. We thought about a lot of kinds of people and settled on uh, Big Pussy having an illegitimate son by an unknown Gumar mistress because everybody loves Big Pussy and we wanted someone who would sort of have a connection to the crew and yet not be the same as a lot of the people we've already seen come on the show. We don't want you mistaking our character for Jackie Jr. Or some other person who's come in for a season like Steve Buscemi. It's a similar idea, but someone new. Joey is the character that you guys control. He's got to do good, otherwise he gets whacked and he ends up like me. Your old man was a rat, like it or not. I would to tell you, kid. Chris ain't wrong. He's trying to overcome the fact that his father left with a bad name. 663. It's amazing how many times your family can disappoint me. We thought it would be really neat if he had an illegitimate son somewhere, you know? He's such a family guy, and it would be such a conflicted start for this character in the game to be, you know, the son of a rat. You got a big heart tone, putting big pussy's bastard kid on the payroll. Come on, Chris. Can we bury the hatchet? I'll say it again. I'm not my father. It seemed like there was an open window through Big Pussy having a kid, and that also lets us use the ghost of Big Pussy or an image of Big Pussy as a character in the game. Well, fuck him anyway. He took off. Yeah, I got news for you, Joey. There's more than one way to shame your family. Well, fans are going to love seeing Pussy, you know, back in action. The ghost of Pussy passed. It's like a, uh, uh, you know, like me making a comeback again uh, with the role of Big Pussy. I mean, there were a couple of cast members that even come up and says, you're in the game? I said, yes, I am. Never wear a dead man's watch, especially if you whack the guy. What's good about what happened with this game is that I was uh, able to uh, have some closure with my family, which I really wasn't able to do in the, in the series. I gotta ask you, Tone, about my father. Is he really dead like 
you know, some people think. Well, I guess they, they kind of liked what I did from auditioning for the show. And I guess David Chase remembered me, so when this came about, he suggested me. So it was a nice surprise. Look at you. Fucking street punks. What do you care? He actually is not just voice acting uh, on a different character. He plays himself. The person in the game looks like Christian. I was born to kick ass. Player character, Joey, is kind of similar to what Christopher was when he was young. Well, he's a pain in the ass. He, he needs to kick every now and then, and Paulie's the perfect guy to do that. Though. Paulie's trying to school him on being sharp, but every now and then the kid would Todd's out a little bit. But Paulie pulls him back in. I work for Paulie. You got that? Paulie. You're working your way up through the ranks, and as you're doing that, you have to interact with all Check the key members of the Sopranos crew. You must be fucking kidding me. They give you missions. If you accomplish them, you move up. If you don't, dire consequences. We have a respect meter in there. When his respect meter drops to the bottom, then he gets whacked. Did everything great. Right up to the point where you got yourself killed. Fraught with nothing but danger from within. From without. Listen, kid, you don't talk like that to a captain, no matter how immature he is. From what I understand, he winds up in the end of the game getting made. If not, he don't. There's things in here that aren't in the show. Um, new things, new characters. There's some original characters we created actually in conjunction with David Chase, um, who are voiced by new actors. Hi, you've reached Trishel. Leave your name and number, and I hope we speak soon. I'm Monica Kina, and I'm playing Trishel. Trishel is a really tough cookie. <laughs> you're not gangsters, you're losers! I'm definitely this tough, badass girl that doesn't take any crap from anybody. But at the same time, I sort of play the hot, sexy love interest of Joey. In some ways, she's Joey's conscious, and she helps kind of drive the player and kind of point them in the right direction as they're going through their experience. You ever want to, you know, get reacquainted, call me, okay? Digits, now. <laughs> I was wondering why you'd be doing Tony's dirty work. Now I know, you're a fucking moron. Uh, Robert Costanza plays Pachetta, who he is, in a way, the other Tony. What am I doing here? And why do I exist? The existential question. Your Bhutana friend, how's she looking these days? Better than your nephew did when I dumped him off the pig. We ain't true, Joey, not even close. Angelo Bouchetta was, is, is very violent, very dangerous, not easily intimidated by Tony. Don't oh, fuck me, Tony, I need this. Oh, Angie, watch the language. This is a religious event. He does play this, this older, more of an old school mob boss from Philly who has been in prison and kind of comes back. I did some Italian for them. I don't really speak, as I told people, I'm bilinguini. Disgrazia da fangula mamma da. Are you guys hearing all this? <laughs> it's like another another episode of the show, you know, really. It just it it gels right into it. It's like a, it's a solid fit. When you start out with a world like The Sopranos has, it's not a, it's not a blank slate. For us it was a really interesting balance of reality and the way that the show treats the characters and delivering something that the game players want. It's not about good and evil and black and white. It's, it's very gray. The main characters are not necessarily heroes in the traditional sense. And so it was like a challenge. It was kind of cool to see how we can do that, how we can bring that experience to video games. We're both writing in the voice of The Sopranos and also making sure we hit the marks that a video game requires in terms of keeping the player in the right space and letting the player know what they can and can't be doing in the particular instance of gameplay they're in. Uh, obviously recreating such a beautiful visual style that the show's come up with that is like cutting edge reality. It's very tough to simulate that reality in 3D. You looking for sympathy? Get the fuck out of here! We had to think a lot about how to represent the characters in the world so you could actually interact with them. You come to a game like this and you expect the world to feel like what you know from the show. We want to give everybody that backdoor access. That's their world. Their world is very small. So the locations are very important to them. We want you to walk into to the Bing. We want you to feel that rush when you see the strippers. We want you to interact with Silvio. You got Tony up there in the uh, the back room, which we had to establish clearly where the back room was in reference to the Bing because it's kind of like sometimes vague. They go and then all of a sudden they're in the back room. Well, we actually have to put the space in between there. We get the architecture. We got the blueprints from the set. We're walking the set. We know what's going on with these places. So it's like, you're gonna go into the bathroom. It's gonna be recreated as if it's the exact bathroom that is in the Bing that they shoot in the series. What's your fucking point? 
you had to put some new areas that would um, mix well with the show's already very realistic, Vesuvios and all those areas, Satriales, and then we would go and shoot whatever in New Jersey. Everything that we're doing is over there because it's so different. We had a whole camera set, you know, taking all the, the environments, the, you know, the docks. We actually took uh, pictures of the workers on the set. They've shot other parts of Sopranos in these places. We're using them in a different way. So like if you're seeing uh, part of our game, usually it's from, from the show. We have a garage and the garage is actually from the show, from Big Pussy's garage from the first season. So we revisit that, we rebuild it up a little bit differently, but at the same point, you're getting a new environment, but very much branded Sopranos. That is, without a doubt, the dumbest fucking idea I ever heard. And all the characters are characters. That's what really helps us on the art side. We have to be completely correct in the shoes that the people wear, in the, the outfits, and the, 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 the poor count, you know, on their face. People know these characters. They love these characters. So if you don't nail it dead on, somebody's like, oh, that's not how he looks. That's not the facial expression he would make. It's not just a person, you know. It's like they have a character. They have an attitude. They have these looks, these, you know, Silvio's. We've got that all the time. And we actually got books on like how Italians speak with their hands and stuff like that. He's a stonard of the first magnitude. The whole cast has been really, really great about working with, uh, you know, uh, giving us feedback on their likeness and their the image quality that we're trying to get out there. The animations of the Sopranos are, are, are lifelike. It is an interactive Sopranos experience. When you walk into the Bada Bing, you see the characters. And in other times, uh, they will actually go along with you uh, on jobs. So they, they give you jobs, and then every once in a while, they'll actually come along on the job, so you'll be able to go into a place with Christopher and kind of interact with people with him, fight people with him. Let's go, Junior. Our work here is done. Mainly, the player usually goes to the what we call hubs in the game, or the main locations that you'll recognize from the show, the Bada Bing. Satriales, Vesuvios. Um, you'll go there to interact with the crew, get um, missions from the crew. Time to lose your cherry, my friend. Who invited you? This is Satriales, and what we had to do was to create a complete 3D model of the actual set from the show. So we started off with photographs uh, taken from all angles of the location, the signs on the outside and what the, uh, the bricks are made of on the side. And then we would go to the interior and model every individual smaller object in the set. We would then create these photographs and turn them into what we call texture maps, which are an image that's applied to the surface of models inside the game. Then we turn them into geometry that you can fly around through or walk through. And then we shade the geometry so that we have a full um, lighting of what the actual lighting of the set is and then we apply the texture maps to create a full uh, rendered image of the set. You'd be surprised how quickly uh, a lot of these sets can really go. I mean um, basically we have in three weeks we have a working model of the set that we can run around in and everything looks pretty much right. You really feel like you're in saturality just you're looking around like wow I'm really there. What's really exciting about it is to feel like you've now entered the show and go to the actual locations, be in the environment, interact with the actual cast members. You can also play poker with them eventually in the game once you earn their respect. Ah, uh, come the fuck on. The gambling minigame is cool for many reasons. Hell yeah. One, it, it allows you to, to play poker, which is always fun. Don't be a bitch, call me. And it allows you to play poker with the crew, which is always cool. Shit, forgot. While it's a little light. In the actual game, the, the gambling means a lot in terms of the money that you uh, earn. You, you, you know, this game's all about paying up. Were those good? I never really played before. <laughs> and by gambling, you can get extra money to to help pay up. I got some extra scratch. To unlock extra things and just kind of advance in the game quicker. Yeah, but your mother's a whore. Besides just interacting with the crew, it's your chance to take money away from Tony and Polly and Christopher. If you call, I'll wipe the floor with you. They may not like that, but you can still do it. And then you can use that money to uh, buy unlockables in the game, concept art, pay for lap dances. Just give your money to me and save time. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's a completely licensed soundtrack. Every scene scored uh, as the TV show would be scored. The licensed music is used to score uh, feelings and and what would normally be playing in certain areas of the game. We have uh, like male vocalists kind of crooning at Vesuvio, and uh, 
We've got classical music playing in the law office, and we've got, uh, you know, kind of nasty electronica playing at the Bada Bing. All kinds of music, and that's another thing that made this project really fun to work on is, you know, all the different types. Not bad, mama's boy, not bad. All the ambiences, you know, and all the environments are being designed from scratch. All the combat sounds are being designed from scratch. We have a lot of special moves. <gasps> Realism and, and sort of a, a theme that I'm going forward is like hyper realism, which is like realism with like something a little bit extra to give it that edge, you know, because some of the violence is really brutal. Don't you hate it when that happens? Out of bang. In the show The Sopranos, there's always consequences to every action. Sometimes they're unintended. We wanted to have some of that same feeling of the unexpected and the unintended happen in the in the game and that was part of capturing the the character of the show what in this world makes for great gameplay like most games that you play have some sort of action element to them they don't fight as much on the sopranos as you do in the game but we've tried to deal with it by having lots of verbal choices and some actual games where the player chooses what they say and there's a variety of responses that they'll hear based on their choices I'm this cat sucker or maybe you like seeing your captain disrespect fuck this guy He's lucky he ain't fucking dead. In some instances, if you say a smooth line, you'll get a smooth response from a different guy, or if you say something tough to the guy, maybe you intimidate him. And we have a variety of results based on your choices, and sometimes for every two choices you make, there'll be 10 you never heard. And then of course, like we do want to bring that level of like drama and characterization to the world too. You fucking gobble! Action is what video game players want to play. There's long periods of character interaction punctuated by intense violence. We jumped into the show and did a survey of like all five seasons basically, and are like, what are the moments where you actually do combat with somebody? And we found that they were very interesting because they used the environment. Hey, what'd you do? Tony's crew is obviously not about fighting fair. They'll grab anything they can to get their point across. We wanted to take that part of the show and bring it into the game by creating hundreds of unique weapons. Things like typical bats and wrenches, but then we have some untypical things like we got a lava lamp, we got a megaphone, uh, crutches, IV stands. I think we even got a prosthetic leg in there somewhere. It's really gory, it's shocking, it's not always pleasant. Grabbing a guy and punching him, grabbing a guy and taking him to the ground, choking him. We have a lot of special moves in this game, really brutal moves where people are just in total agony. Oh yeah, there's, there's arm breaks, there's the nut twist. Somebody gets whacked, somebody gets you know beat up, somebody gets the shit kicked out of them. As the gamer, those are the moments that you kind of want to experience. The idea of being released from your social inhibitions, the way you imagine that mob characters are and getting to play in a way that you can't play in the real world. And that's the real exciting part about games is that it gives you a way to live a different life, maybe not as a law-abiding citizen, but when you put down the controller, you can go back to being that law-abiding citizen again. Joey, get the fuck over here. I'm so excited about this game. <laughs> Just the amount of effort that has gone into it from this entire team. And we have a whole slew of really talented, great people, everyone with their specialties doing like what they do best. And kind of just the day-to-day -day of seeing everyone contributing their little piece of it and bringing it together and it becoming sort of this polished whole. Pains have been taken to make it authentic and real. Hey you, shut the fuck up. Oh, fuck. This generation uh, loves the games. They love animation, especially realistic animation. You get to beat somebody down with a pork chop in the back of Satrialis. I'm with you, pal. That's a Sopranos moment. It's something to do when Sopranos isn't on. We filled in the blanks with HBO's collaboration, and we believe that it's the most authentic experience you can get. That's what I'm talking about. This is not a, a video game that has the Sopranos influence into it. It is a Sopranos video game. Just check it out. I think it's about time that there's a game. People are going to be feeling like they're part of the Sopranos.